Okay, atomic physics, are you ready? So before we get into it, we need to talk about black body radiation. Probably first you're like, what the heck is that? And why do we need to talk about it? Well, a black body is an object that perfectly absorbs and then perfectly re-emits all wavelengths of electromagnetic radiation, okay? So it perfectly absorbs it and then perfectly re-emits it, okay? The only... Um, Example of a perfect black body that I have for you is our sun. Okay. Um, but, and then there's other things on um, Earth that can be, uh, have black body radiation uh, tendencies, but, or black body tendencies, but they're not quite there, like uh, when magma is really, really hot. Okay. Um, anyways, why is this important? Why do we care? Because, um, this should mean that with black body radiation, as EM, the frequency of EMR increases, the intensity of it should increase. So what should happen is the intensity should just go like that, and it should just go off the charts. Um, and the thing is, it doesn't. So they had to explain this because they're like, if this happens, they called it like if they were so worried about this, that they called it the ultraviolet catastrophe. Like it was just so dramatic. And then they found that doesn't happen. It actually kind of, um, levels out here. Okay. And this was the start of quantum physics and why, uh, we started thinking about things in quanta. Okay. Because the classical model was not explaining the actual data. Okay, this was the actual data. This is what classical physics expected to happen. So here, everything we knew so far about physics, um, well, it just didn't work at this point. So we needed a new explanation. So with these black body observations, we... Uh, figure out the intensity of the emitted radiation does increase, but until a particular point, and then it just starts going right down. Okay. And it does depend on, um, temperature, right? So that peak will be different for different temperatures. This is for 6,000 K for 5,000 K. The peak is much lower and gets lower and lower depending on where you are and different places in the spectrum that peak does as well. So with 600 Cal or 6,000 Kelvin, what we see is once it gets to violet and ultraviolet, it doesn't keep going up. It actually, the intensity starts going down the radiation intensity, which is a really, really good thing for us because if our sun was just like, if the radiation intensity of just UV went up more, um, that would be really bad for us. It'd be really bad for our skin. It'd be really bad for just everything in our health. And so thankfully this is what happens, but they didn't know why this happened because they're like this, according to our cl classical physics is if the frequency goes up or the wavelength goes down in this graph, the radiation intensity should go up, but it doesn't. Okay. Okay. So let's take a look at this guy named Max Planck. Uh, I know it looks like it says Planck. Um, and that's what I say sometimes. And a lot of scientists say that sometimes, but it is technically Planck just FYI. Uh, so he really started off quantum mechanics, but again, at this point it was just a proposal. He was like, I think this might be what's going on, but I have nothing to back it up. Um, this is just kind of my hypothesis for now. And then they worked forward from there. So he proposed that atoms don't continuously admit or absorb light, but they do it in quanta, which is basically just means little chunks, right? So it's just like going up steps. You can't like, it's like an escalator would be continuously going upwards. But if you're going up steps, you can only hit like certain heights. And so steps would be an example of something that's quantized, right? It has like chunks and an escalator is something that's more continuous. Uh, and so therefore, if light's just being emitted continuously in this quanta, then they just have like this, uh, it only comes out in certain chunks. And so therefore it would be coming out in smaller chunks, um, the higher the frequency got. Okay. Um, so that's where the word quantum comes from. It comes from quanta, that the fact that light is being only emitted in certain chunks. Okay. And so Einstein, he was working with Einstein at the time. So he's like, oh, okay, well, if light's proposed of quanta chunks, I'm going to call that a particle and I'm going to call that particle a photon. So there you go. You finally know what a photon is. That is it. It's a particle of 
light. Okay, so this is Albert Einstein, and he's uh, he's no slouch. He knows what he's talking about. So this is was his proposal. If light is produced of or composed of quanta, I'm going to call them photons, and I'm going to call them particles. Uh, and I know you're saying to me right now, um, but we just went over a whole unit that's saying that light was a wave. So if your question is, is light a wave or a particle? The answer is yes. Okay. <laughs> Uh, and we'll talk more about that, but let's let's talk a little bit more about light as quanta or light as photons for now. So if I want to find the energy of a photon, I need to go uh, use this equation, E equals HF, where E is the energy of a photon in joules. H is Planck's constant, okay? So with Planck's constant, we have a version with joules and we have a version with electron volts. So we could also put this in electron volts if we wanted to as well that's also a, a unit of energy okay so just depending on whether you want your energy in joules or electron volts then um, that's going to tell you which h to use okay and then we have f our frequency um which is measured in hertz so you i'm sure already know all about that Okay, but the thing is, we can make a slightly different um, version of this equation, and this is already on your data sheet, so you don't even have to worry about doing this. But just in case you're like, why is there two equations there for the energy of a photon? This is why, because we know that F can be expressed in terms of C and in terms of wavelength and all that stuff. So since C is equal to lambda F, then F is equal to C over lambda. So we have a second equation for the energy of a photon, because say you have the wavelength instead of the frequency, there you go. And those are both on your data sheet. So uh, you can use whatever you need, um, depending on whether you have frequency or wavelength, or want to find frequency or like wavelength. So as you already know, light of different colors have a different energy. So red photon has a lower energy because, of course, it has a bigger wavelength. So that means you'd either be dividing by a bigger number and it has a smaller frequency. Than, so then you're multiplying by a smaller number. So it's always going to get a smaller energy. OK, so that's low energy. And then, of course, our blue photons uh, have much higher energy because they're shorter wavelengths, but higher frequencies. If you want to determine how many photons are being admitted, uh, you just take the energy of the whole system and then divide it by the photon energy of just one. So if I want to know the energy of um, all the red light being shot at something, then I take just the energy of all that, divide it by the energy of one red photon, and I can get the number of photons that are being emitted in a certain time frame. Okay, so let's do one example. All right, so we have a typical gamma ray emitting uh, emitted from a nucleus during re radioactive decay, and we'll have an energy of 200 kilo, kilo electron volts, okay? So, of course, that's 200,000 kilo uh, electron volts, and we want to know what the wavelength is. And then we want to know, would we expect significant diffraction of this type of light when it passes through an everyday opening like a door, um, which we'll get onto in a minute. But let's start with the wavelength okay so here our energy is uh 200 kilo electron volts which is just going to be 200,000 electron volts so when i'm taking a look at this equation which of course i'm not going to use hf because here i don't have f uh, or want f i want the wavelength and i'm going to rearrange for the wavelength so lambda is equal to hc over the energy okay uh, so here energy i have in terms of electron volts so i'm going to use Planck's constant with the electron volts not the one with the joules okay so again this is on your data sheet it's under constants and Planck's constant so we have for electron volts 4.14 times 10 to the negative 15 electron volts times seconds okay and then multiplying that by speed of light three times ten to the eight meters per second and then i'll divide that by how much energy it is and that is two hundred thousand electron volts okay because we have again kilo electron volts so that's just multiplying that by a thousand and what do we get i get six point 
2, 1 times 10 to the negative 21 meters. And that is the wavelength. Okay? So there we go. That's the wavelength of that photon. Um, the second part of this is the would we expect a significant diffraction of this type of light? Well, remember, this is gamma radiation. What do we know about gamma radiation? It has an incredibly high frequency and an incredibly small uh, wavelength. So if we have a smaller wavelength, then therefore we actually have a smaller angle that it diffracts at. If you look at your equation, I'm gonna write it up here, back from the last unit for diffraction, it would be lambda equals d times sine theta divided by n. Um, so, as you can see there, the wavelength and the angle are directly proportional. So if I have a really small wavelength, then I'm gonna have a really, really small angle. So we would not expect this to diffract very uh, seriously, because look, at how small that wavelength is, times 10 to the negative 21 meters. With visible light, we're dealing with times 10 to the negative nine, and it still only diffracts, you know, like a few centimeters. So to have something this small diffract would um, be absolutely crazy. So definitely no significant diffraction. And can you believe that's all I'm going to talk at you today? Okay, that's it. I'm done. I just want to really just introduce you to the idea of a photon uh, and light as a particle. And at this point, you're like, well, why would we think about light as a particle? Because I've just spent the last month telling you how light is a wave. So starting tomorrow, you better be ready. We're going to start talking about how light acts like a particle. Because at this point, you just have my word for it. But don't worry, there's still been plenty of things done that suggest to us that light can act like a particle as well sometimes. Okay, so uh, look forward to that. It is definitely going to get pretty fun with a photoelectric effect. Uh, be ready for it. But for now, just keep working on those atomic assignments and a few questions to go along with this today.